Hey, you welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know about. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Recently, the S&P 500 closed at another all-time high, thus setting a new record, which is great news for stock market investors. Meanwhile, we also saw the company named Crocs, which is a shoe company, surge by 12% in their share price up to $121 per share. The reason for this great news is because Crocs recently devoured Wall Street expectations, which caused their share price to absolutely surge. So if you are an investor into Crocs, please comment down below about what you think of the company, because as of right now, I am still waiting to buy into this company, so tell me if I'm too late or not. Next up, let's talk about some AI news. From OpenAI, which recently unveiled its text-to-video AI tool named Sora. As of the most recent reports, the tool can generate videos up to a minute long based on a user's text prompt. I have seen a few videos generated by Sora, and honestly, they are almost indistinguishable from actual videos, which is kind of scary. OpenAI has promised their customers that their Sora model can create, quote, complex scenes with multiple characters, end quote. However, some of the physics in these scenes, due to cause and effects, have indicated that this did come from artificial intelligence, but in the future, I think that will be weeded out to where these videos will become indistinguishable from actual videos. We also have Google in the news, who has created their own model and tool to compete directly with OpenAI's Sora by providing another text-to-video platform that is generated by AI. Let me know down in the comments if you plan to use either of the tools from OpenAI or Google in regards to text to AI video, because I would love to hear your thoughts about this. But next, let's talk about Boeing stock, ticker symbol BA. Boeing stock has crashed by around 20% this year, thanks to the gaping hole that appeared in a MAX 9 737 during a flight. And this led to the FAA to ground and then cap production of this particular aircraft. Meanwhile, this bad news for Boeing has been great news for their competition, considering that Airbus, who is the world's largest commercial plane manufacturer, is up around 5% in their share price right now. Airbus has really been putting in the work recently, considering that they obliterated the industry record for new orders last year and now boasts a decade-long backlog of orders. And to top it all off, this year they are anticipated to boost their aircraft deliveries by approximately 9%, which is great news for investors. But you should know that Boeing stock will eventually start to climb back up, so honestly, I am using this as an opportunity to buy into Boeing stock right now, because ultimately, they are still a fundamentally solid company, and I would encourage you to look further into Boeing so you can do your own research to determine if they are good for your personal portfolio, even though they are falling in their share price right now. Next up in the news, we have Meta Platforms, which is the parent company to Facebook, Instagram, and Threads. Recently, Meta Platforms, ticker symbol META, which I personally hold in my portfolio, will stop recommending political content to users unless they specifically opt in for it on platforms such as Threads and Instagram. I actually think that this is a very wise move from Meta, and I anticipate that this should reflect positively in their share price. But regardless, they are still a very solid company, which I hold in my portfolio, so always make sure to do your own research before you make any investment decision. Now let's talk about Meta's competitor, which is Apple, because in the previous video, we talked about how Apple's Vision Pro is competing directly against Meta Platform's Quest 3. Both the Apple Vision Pro and Meta's Quest 3 are mixed reality and virtual reality headsets. We talked about the pros and cons of both of these headsets, but recently Apple got some negative news surrounding their Apple Vision Pro. Some people are actually returning their Apple Vision Pro headsets just two weeks after the device launched. The main complaints that Apple is receiving due to their Apple Vision Pro is that it is causing headaches, neck pain, eye issues, and ultimately it just doesn't have a lot of useful apps. Customers are also complaining about the very high price of this product, which is around 
thousand dollars, which is substantially more expensive than the Quest 3, which is worth around five hundred dollars, even though it has arguably better technology. So I would love to hear your thoughts about both the Quest 3 and the Apple Vision Pro in the comments below. Next up, we have Stellantis, which I personally hold in my portfolio, which is also the parent company to Chrysler. Stellantis is an automotive company, and they recently turned a profit on their EV sector. And they also said that they aren't anticipating to slow down on their EV sales or production, unlike some of their rivals, such as Ford and General Motors. Both Ford and General Motors have invested billions of dollars into electric vehicles and manufacturing them, but it seems that the demand for electric vehicles has since cooled off some. In my personal opinion, this doesn't really have anything to do with electric vehicles in and of themselves, but rather it has to do with the price point of these electric vehicles, which are just too high for the average consumer. Therefore, once the prices of these electric vehicles lower, we are going to see an increase in demand for them, and that is exactly why Tesla is launching their $25,000 vehicle in 2025, which we've talked about in previous videos. So I can't wait for that because it's going to act as a phenomenal catalyst for Tesla and their TSLA shares. The next thing that you need to be aware of to be an informed investor is why Kathy Wood is selling Nvidia stock. If you didn't know, Kathy Wood is the CEO of ARK Investment Management, also known as ARK Invest, and I view her as a celebrity investor. You should also know that Nvidia makes GPUs, ticker symbol NVDA, and they have been one of the biggest winners of this artificial intelligence hype wave. The reason why Kathy Wood of ARK Invest is worried about Nvidia and why she is selling shares of this company is because she believes that this company will undergo a massive correction soon. Kathy Wood believes that the share price of Nvidia Nvidia will start to come down, and this could start as soon as their upcoming earnings report. This is why Kathy Wood of ARK Invest has sold at least $4.5 million worth of Nvidia shares just this year. According to the Wall Street Journal, Kathy Wood said this, and I quote, the expectation levels just get so high that they cannot be met, end quote. So essentially, she's saying that investors are just so enthusiastic about NVIDIA that the hype is just too great and NVIDIA couldn't possibly live up to their expectations. This leads me to believe that Kathy Wood believes that NVIDIA will start to decline in their share price after the upcoming earnings report. On top of that, Kathy Wood also pointed out an increase in NVIDIA's competition from other big technology companies like Meta Platforms, Tesla, Alphabet, and Amazon. According to Kathy Wood, she believes that all of these companies are working on their own AI chips, which makes them less reliant on NVIDIA. Now, in one sense, I understand where she's coming from. However, we do know that these companies recently have reached out to NVIDIA to make custom chips for these companies individually. Therefore, I don't think that Kathy Wood is fully right here, but honestly, only time will tell, so I will keep you updated. Next up in the news, we have Next Era Energy, ticker symbol NEE, which currently trades for $57 per share. The reason why this company is in the news is not only because they are a phenomenal company in my opinion, but they also increased their dividend by approximately 10%. Next Era Energy distributes a quarterly dividend worth around 46 cents per share, but recently they increased that to around 51 cents per share. That's why this company now has a forward yield of 3.62%, but the news gets even better. Their board of directors also approved an updated dividend policy beyond 20 2024, which is expected to translate to a growth rate in dividends per share of roughly 10% per year through at least 2026 off of a 2024 base, which is expected to be $2.06 per share. This is great news for the company and shareholders in this company, so comment down below if you hold any shares. But now let me talk about some of the bad news that has happened recently in regards to Bloom Energy, which is a stock that I personally own. Bloom Energy, ticker symbol BE, has recently decreased in their share price dramatically by around 17.46%. For context, this is a hydrogen energy company, and two things recently happened. The first is that they released quarter four results, and secondly, their CFO randomly left the company. First, let's start off with their fourth quarter results, to where the company's revenue dropped by 23%, which was catastrophic for investors. These results dumbfounded analysts, who actually expected a slight increase in sales for this company, but clearly they were met with the complete opposite. The main reason for this revenue decrease largely came from a hit from their Korean business. 
And this is despite the company announcing several collaborations over the last year for hydrogen fuel cells over in Korea. But now let's talk about arguably a bigger problem, and that would be their CFO randomly leaving the company. This did not leave a good taste in investors' mouths. For instance, along with the poor financial results, the CFO of the company is leaving. According to the most recent reports, we don't know exactly why the CFO is leaving, and apparently this departure was not planned. So when we put together the CFO abruptly leaving the company, as well as poor fourth quarter results, that's why the share price dropped by around 17%. For me, I really like hydrogen fuel cell companies, and the future is going to be very bright for some of them. However, as of right now, I don't know which hydrogen fuel cell companies are going to be successful, but Bloom Energy is definitely one that I like and I hold in my portfolio, so I really hate to see this happening to them. Next up, let's talk about the United Parcel Service, ticker symbol UPS. According to current data, the parcel shipping industry still sees very weak demand. And this is exactly why some investors are piling into this company because they want to jump in while the share price is low before demand comes back. We even saw an analyst upgrade his price target and rating for UPS stock. He upgraded them from a hold rating to a buy rating, so investors are liking this. He also increased his price prediction from $165 up to $170 per share, which is great news for investors. Investors. Although the United Parcel Service got this great news, the stock really didn't do much in response to this. And this is somewhat shocking, considering that this analyst's price target actually implies a gain of roughly 20% from current levels. However, you should be aware that only 41% of analysts who are covering this company actually says to buy them, to where the average price target for UPS stock is $161 per share. Instead, a lot of investors decide to invest into UPS's main competitor, which is FedEx. The reason for this is because 68% of analysts who are covering this company rate their shares as a buy rating, and they also have an average price target of around $297 per share, which would equate to an upside potential of 25% over the next 12 months. Now, for me personally, I have both of these companies on a watch list, and if I invest into one of them, I most likely will also invest into the other. The reason for this is because I take a co-optition approach. For instance, if I buy into Home Depot, I will also buy into Lowe's. If I buy into Walmart, I will also buy stock in Target. If I invest into UPS, I will also invest into FedEx. Therefore, it really doesn't matter which of these behemoths ultimately win, I will get paid either way. So I would love to hear your thoughts about either of these companies down below in the comments. Next up, we're going to talk about Twilio, ticker symbol TWLO, which recently dropped by around 15% in their share price price. And this is despite the company bringing in stronger than expected quarterly results. For context, Twilio is a communications software tools provider, and they had a great quarter four of 2023, to where they saw the revenues jump by 5% year over year, up to $1.08 billion. The company also brought in adjusted non-GAAP net income on a quarterly basis, which quadrupled over the same period, up to $0.86 cents per share. To put this into perspective, analysts from Wall Street only anticipated the company to bring in 58 cents per share, but instead they dominated that prediction by bringing in 86 cents. Likewise, for their revenue, analysts predicted that the company would only bring in $1.04 billion, but they actually brought in $1.08 billion. So it doesn't make a lot of sense why the company is falling in their share price. The CEO of the company even said that Twilio had a terrific quarter, while noting their strides to become gap profitable. However, we did get some bad news in this company, but I don't think that this bad news would justify the company dropping by over 15% in their share price. And here's the bad news. Management explained to investors that they anticipate a sequential decline in their revenue. And it's no surprise that investors did not want to hear that, and that's why the company fell in their share price. But I think these good results were actually way more beneficial than the bad news that came in for this company. So I think this was unreasonable for the share price to drop that radically. You should also know that Twilio is an exceptionally risky company, so that's why you always need to make sure that you do your own due diligence before you make any investment decision. Next up in the news, we see one of my favorite artificial intelligence stocks dropping in their share price right now. And that stock would be none other than Super Microcomputer. Super Microcomputer's SMCI stock got crushed today by dropping 20% in their share price. So let's talk about why that happened. Originally, the company was on a very bullish trend, jumping by around 7.4% in their share price. 
However, the stock seems to have lost ground after new coverage from an analyst came out about this company. And here's what the analyst from Wells Fargo had to say. The analyst published a note about Supermicro and he also initiated coverage on this stock and he gave them an equal weight rating and a price target of $960 per share. Their share price dropped by so much that now they are trading at around $803 per share, which ultimately defeated the whole purpose because now their current share price is actually lower than what the analyst gave the price target for. So honestly, investors should be buying this company, not selling it anymore. Now, this is not going to deter me from investing more into this company, and I still think that they have a lot of growth left in them. However, I understand that some investors are still a little iffy about this company, which is why I encourage you to do your own research. My own thesis reflects exactly what the author of this article has written right here, so I'm going to quote straight from the article, which says this, and I quote, there are actually good reasons to think that the business will see powerful long-term tailwinds related to the rise of artificial intelligence. For the fiscal year that will wrap at the end of June, Supermicro's management is guiding for sales to be between $14.3 billion and $14.7 billion. Even at the low end of management's sales targets, their revenue would more than double on an annual basis. And there's actually a good chance that this performance will beat expectations this year and in 2025, end quote. So ultimately, these people who are selling this company don't really know what they're doing. So I would love to hear your thoughts about Supermicro down below in the comments. Lastly, let's round out the video talking about the most recent upcoming catalysts. On Monday, February 19th, the stock market will be closed for the observance of President's Day. On Tuesday, February 20th, you're going to want to keep an eye out for Fisker, Beyond Meat, and C3.ai, which could all drop lower in their share prices due to the elevated amount of short interest that these companies are experiencing. On Wednesday, February 21st, we also have very good earnings coming out in the form of Analog Devices, NVIDIA, Etsy, as well as Rio Tinto, on top of Marathon Oil. But that's not all because we can also look forward to Thursday to where their earnings reports would include PG&E, Dominion Energy, Moderna, Intuit, and Booking Holdings. And then lastly, to close out the week on Friday, February 23rd, we are going to see a few notable companies release earnings, but ultimately, I would only pay attention to Warner Bros. Discovery. And that would conclude the latest stock updates and the upcoming catalysts for the stock market. Go ahead and annihilate that like button right now for more videos just like this one. Subscribe if you are new, hit that bell notification so you can be alerted when I upload new stock news videos, and don't forget to comment your thoughts down below. With that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.